Okay, so today I'm going to give it my first go of home education by doing a watercolour demonstration of some daisies. I'm at home in my spare room. Um, the weather outside is fairly poor today, so the light is not great, but um, I'll give it a go. So the first thing I'm going to do, as you can see, is um, I've got some watercolour paper, um, which is 180 gram. It's um, rag paper. It's on an easel, and if I just turn that slightly, you can see that I've got my watercolour palette there. I've got two bottles of water. One will, one will be for keeping clean and one will be for um, getting rid of the paint it, that gets clogged up in the brush. Also have a couple of small brushes, a tissue and some um, credit card. Okay, so if I can try and position the easel just right. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is um, draw my daisies. So I'm going to basically draw some eye shapes. So just some straightforward eye shapes like that. And then, um, so there's only one there to start with. And then I'm gonna just bring out some petals, bring out some petals like that, bring it around, bring it around. They almost look like dancing daisies, but and then this one. Uh, I think I might just paint another one there, just to... And then another, we'll do another eye, uh, eye here. And again, we'll bring out... These petals are going to go behind the other one. So, because you don't want to paint two daisies, or three daisies, where it's a bit unrealistic, if they don't overlap each other. And... Um, as you can see with the petals, I'm just doing some basic shapes. There, so we've got two daisies there, and we'll put another one up, up here, just to, because we can. I think sometimes you can spend too long on a drawing when actually you don't need to because the um, paint is going to do the work for us. So, and I'll tell you what I'll do is I'll just put another one down here, I'll put it in a bit further. You'll notice that I tend not to use, do any rubbing out. because we can get around that with the paint. You'll hardly see the, the pencil marks anyway. Okay, so there is my basic, very basic uh, four daisies. On the paper. So now I'm gonna just get a little bit of paint. Try and turn that so that you can see. I'm going to pick up my ease and pick up my um, paint pad. As you can see, it's really grubby, really dirty. But I've had it a long time now, and I use it all the time. So I'm just going to fill in the top of the daisy. because we want that to dry. And I'm just filling that in with a bit of yellow. Okay, as you can see, I wasn't massively, massively picky about that. It's just a case of getting it on there. So now I'm gonna to go to a bigger brush. And this brush is um, a size eight. And it's, it's quite soft, as you can see. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do start with what we call negative painting. So I'm going to fill in the background before I do anything. So the first bit I'm going to fill in is I'm going to put a bit of yellow up here, a little bit of blue. I'm going to have to move it quite fast in order to uh, keep it keep it wet. And you'll notice that I've got the whole thing on a slant. And that's 
good because it allows the water to run off. What you don't want is if it's flat on the kitchen table, the water pools and then it gets a bit muddy and then you lose the actual freshness of the painting. So it needs to be almost on a slope, not too steep, but just enough for the water to be able to run down, for the water to be able to dry in. And the trick is to have the control of the paint on the brush. And the right amount of water on the right amount of paint will go into the paper. It just takes a little bit of practice. So I'm just going to dip into my yellow. And I'm going to put the yellow at the top, top there. Nice and fresh. And then a bit more. And then I'm going to go straight into my blue. And I'm going to put the blue right over the top of that yellow. The blue I'm using is um, a Windsor blue. And I'm going to go right over the other side because that yellow is already starting to dry. And as you can see, the blue and the yellow have made quite a nice green. So now I come down, I've got to be a bit more careful now as I get down to the, to the edge of the petals. But I've also got to move quite fast. And as you can see, I don't go right up to the edge of the um, boundary there that I've got, because I don't really want to do that, because what I want to do is go outside of it, and then because we can cover that later with So I'm back into the yellow. And if you if you take a look at the the paint, you can see here that it's it's pooling. So that is really you've got to be really careful that it doesn't actually run right down through the through the centre of your page. Or your bit of paper. I'm just gonna put a couple of lines in there, a couple of lines in there. Because you know you might you might think oh it's ruined if that happens it probably isn't ruined because like with most things it can be corrected or it can be altered I'm just being careful as I go over the top of that daisy because I think it's possibly still a bit wet and then I'm dipping into the water and I'm gonna it's quite a nice blue isn't it I'm gonna point. A bit more in there, a bit darker, a bit lighter. I, I try not to worry too much about. Whether we go over the edges. And again, I put a bit of yellow in there. If I haven't actually used any green, so I've only used the two colors, the blue and the yellow so far. So, It all mixes quite fast, and as you can see, there's quite a lot of water on the paper. But it's just a trick to not have too much in there. All the time you're painting, it's drying. So every single time you go back in, it's drying. Now you have to be careful with watercolour because if something's already almost dry, and then you put water on it, you will get what you call a bloom or a cauliflower. Because you've got that little strange little edge, and you've got a little bit of one just there, as you can see. So, I'm just trying to move quite fast with the brush so that the colours merge quite nicely. Actually, it's quite a big brush, but and I'm still moving quite fast with it. It's, it's just having that courage of your convictions, that being by being brave and just getting in there and whacking that paint down. You can, you can actually take too long fussing about. To the extent that it's all starting to dry and you don't. 
and you lose that spontaneity with it and you lose the colour with it because you need you need it to look fresh. You need it to look bright without being muddy. Now, someone once said to me that with watercolour, what makes it is where the dark, to get the best look, the dark must match the white. So dark against light, light against dark. So as you can see there, we've got a bit of a yellow top of the daisy and the blue or green, that I'm not quite sure what it is in this light, but um, over the top of it is dark. I'm just going to paint in those little spaces. And as you can see, I don't really worry too much about if I go over the petal. I've been lucky so far, I've not had any big runs. So I'm now going to go down to work my way down on this side. A big bit of blue. And the blue looks green. I've got a bit of a big drip in there. But I'm just going to try and leave it there for now and hope it doesn't run and hope it dries. So now I need to move it along a bit and just to break it up a little bit I'm going to put in a little bit of pink a bit mad you might think so a little bit of pink so I've cleaned the brush off and then just put a little bit of pink in a bit more straight to the blue and then you get that lovely purple with the two colours mixing and then I'm coming up to another flower head which is probably still a little bit wet but I'm just going to go over the top of it so if you notice I'm still using the big brush I'm only going to use the the little small brush right at the end And you'll also notice that I don't really mind about leaving little white gaps on the paper. Quite often in paintings, people think that it's white paint. Well, actually, it's just the white paper showing through. And that's what you've got to remember that it is. It's just a bit of paper. So if you get it wrong, we do a rubbish painting. And we all do rubbish paintings. I still probably throw away nearly half my work that I do. But it doesn't matter because it's actually just a bit of paper. You just start again, do something different. So where are we? Oh, come, come back up here a bit. Need to bring in a bit of yellow. blue and we got quite a little pool of paint there So in quite, a, in quite a short time, really, we've moved around the painting. We've been able to just use two colours, blue and yellow, with, well, three with the pink. To, uh, to actually achieve this great effect where you can start to just now see the painting starting to take shape. So down here, just to mix it up again, Change it, put a bit of pink in. Doesn't have to be much, just breaks it up a little bit.
So, the yellow. We've already nearly gone around the painting. Completely. If you make a big mistake, you can just get a bit of tissue, a bit of kitchen roll. Works as good as anything. Cheap as chips. A lot of people get hung up on the drawing because they think, oh, I'm not sure I can draw that. I'm not sure I can... Lots of artists can't draw. They can paint and use great colour. It's not always about the ability to be able to draw. But drawing is a is a something new if you practice, you just get better and better at it. <laughs> 